Hello everyone and welcome back to the HCW YouTube channel. My name is Rate Wrestle and we've got another Kamikaze review. Um, we're doing the Kamikaze on the 16th of April at the Triple X Social Club, which was a new venue to Kamikaze. This was Kamikaze Live 33. I was definitely there. There's, there's, there's an image on the screen. I was mm. definitely there. I was, yeah. Mm -mm. That's very suspicious. I heard rumours that you were unable to attend. Yeah, just Here's Alex Connors, everyone. Well, I was definitely there, but you, on the <laughs> other hand, suspect. Yeah, so. I, I, I would suspect it as well, because I've somehow grown a beard within... <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Um, but I did get to end up to get and watch the uh, the footage of the show, pre, which was nice of Kamikaze to let me do that, which was good to keep the reviews going. Um, so the crowd was pretty decent, I could see, from um, from what I could see on the, uh, the footage you could see. Yeah, in fact, uh, the footage doesn't really tell the whole story. We were at this new venue, the Triple X Social Club, uh, over in Kings Norton, and we have a very nice layout there, but the cameras all sit on the same side as the crowd, mm -hmm. so you mostly just saw our entrance wayside, um, whereas the row with the cameras on stretched back to the end of the hall, but you can't really tell that from the uh, footage we've been watching, uh, but a very well-attended show for uh, a first-time venue, uh, and I think it's going to be a very popular one. Yeah, um, so we'll kick off. Um, so we had the first match of the night was yourself um, versus Nate Rowley, who has just come off a championship loss. Um, so this started off with, um, as I said, um, a few of my co-hosts were watching this. Um, they were very suspect of you um, with your ring gear chasing a child. <laughs> it's her job. For those not in attendance... <laughs> If the ring crew do not take my gear, that's expensive gear. That's a ring jacket. That's a very ceremonial piece. If they do not pay respect, get it quickly and efficiently from the ring to the back, then somebody needs to make sure that they are seen to properly and disciplined. And in fact, to be honest, I'm surprised it keeps happening when I keep making it very clear how angry I'll be if they don't get it done in time. Yep, and you definitely made sure she did it this time around. Um, so then we got into yeah, the actual... far too much sass from this ring crew. We've seen Penny the ring crew girl recently, far too much sass, letting members of the crowd touch my entrance robe, not on. No, yeah, she, they shouldn't, yeah, the crowd shouldn't be touching your clothing. That's, um, but then again, previous shows, the crowd have been actually manhandling you, so, um, uh, <laughs> Kamikaze's got a vendetta yeah. against you. And um, a very boisterous crowd indeed. Yeah. So we kicked off with yourself versus Nate. Um, so it started with a kind of technical um, aspect. You, because um, obviously Nate, he, the athletic kind of side, a high risk. So you brought him down to the ground, which is the smart way of doing it straight away to stop the momentum straight away. Um, you had a way with rolling up the crowd at the uh, the Kings Norton uh, Triple uh, Six Social. They were properly properly on your back from the get go. Um, you were in control. Yeah, so much so that. Uh little extra easter egg nugget for you just mm. just in case you weren't there just, just in case. case just in case you weren't actually there in person <laughs> at the end of the show we did a lovely meet and greet that's very common at a wrestling show mm. where people might get to meet their favorites and get autographs signed there was a queue of wrestlers and people going down getting there and people just skipped right over me i wasn't signing autographs apparently i'm not the star of the show well we'll soon see about that no respect just no respect, is there? Um, I do think the uh, opening of the match really set about the strengths of each wrestler very quickly. I managed to reverse Nate Riley, put him in technical holds, work a wrist lock, but he managed to escape not with technique, but with athleticism, front flips, back flips, and even at one point not touching the ropes, just a standing back flip out of nowhere, uh, really highlighted his and my strengths, that they were opposite ends of the spectrum. He was all athleticism and gymnastics, and I was all technical uh submission based yep and just force um so you were in control for a lot of the opening bout and uh, nate tried to fire back up um he had like a cutter on yourself um he hit a great buckshot lariat for him which was nice to see but then out of nowhere you kind of stopped him with a knee to the face uh which signature from yourself um there was a beautiful top rope ddt which i need to be like it, it was beautiful um when i first saw you get when it was getting lined up i was thinking oh he's not gonna oh he's ddt oh <laughs> yeah it's a recent addition to my arsenal but an absolutely devastating one and so far i've used it to great effect to win matches but in this case 
Nate Riley actually kicked out. Yeah, surprisingly kicked out. Um, this was you following... can hear, if you do watch the footage back, that I definitely was not prepared for a kick out at that moment. No. Just like you've said, that DDT, he is unconscious, he's not moving, he's dead in the middle of the ring, and uh, quite a moment of shock for me when he kicked out. Yeah, it made... oh, he was really surprised. Then you follow this up with, obviously, you need to keep on him, knee to the back of the head. Um, and then this was followed by, I don't remember the name of this move, it's the um, suplex into the knee buster. Um, Adam Cole did it a lot, and I, he had a name for it, but I'm not sure yes, what it was. Let's ignore Adam Cole's <laughs> name, and let's call it my name, the Crown of Thorns, which I Crown think is Thorns, a much better that's... name than whatever Adam Cole would do. But being as you are a wrestling review site, and maybe you might want to appear knowledgeable, rare though it seems to be whenever I watch your stuff. The first time I believe this move was done, although I might be corrected in the comments by someone even more amazingly knowledgeable than me, was a wrestler down in Portsmouth called Mark Sloan, who called it the Tomorrow Driver. Uh, so that's maybe its original name and deserved name. Uh, but for us here at Kamikaze, let's call it the Crown of Thorns. Crown of um, and briefly, I think maybe it's worth saying what started Nate Riley's comeback, because it was an impressive moment. Uh, the opening bout, I did manage to floor Nate Riley with a German suplex off the middle rope. Um, and I thought that would have put him down for good. Later in the match, when he started to fire up, I thought, let's hit him with that again. And he managed to flip and land on his feet. Um, and instead of going for any more flips, he just started to get a little bit rough and ready and show that grit and determination. And the crowd were really behind him then when he decided, after he'd landed on his feet from that German off the second, to just start throwing fists. I think that's something we haven't really seen from Nate Riley. Uh, so not only the heart from kicking out of the big DDT, I think we've seen that before. We know yeah. he had heart. But what I don't think we've seen before is grit and determination, which I think in this match uh, showed for the first time for Nate Riley, uh, more than ever before. No, definitely. Um, and the Crown of Thorns did pick up the win. Um, I write the three and court starts. I really enjoyed that. It was a good opener. Um, and you were once again on a roll. Um, so this was followed by um, Edgar Adams versus MJ Grayson. Um, so obviously this was just straight after your match, so you weren't able to catch it as much as you could. Um, yeah, this is probably an apologies to both competitors because I, I'm a big fan of both. This is probably the match I saw the least uh, being directly after my mm. match. Um, I know Edgar obviously used the speed. Um, I know MJ did go for the ground and pound and probably of a bit more of a different style match than the opener where my ground and pound is a bit more submission based. Uh, Mitch's is a bit more, MJ Grayson's is a bit more strike heavy. Uh, it's a bit more work the leg kick mm -hmm. and shots to it. So it was two different ground and pound styles, but with a similar dynamic. Yeah. Um, so this is Edgar Adams uh, return match after his injury. Um, so it started off very much like he hadn't gone very high-paced sequences, um, like leapfrogs, etc., like that. MJ Grayson then just decided this is not working for him, uh, cut him off completely, and started to work the knee, um, which, if you are a speed guy, take out his Probably. legs. Yeah. Um, Edgar kept trying to get back into the fight, but MJ was having none of it, kept cutting him off just as he was kind of warming himself up to it. Um, but eventually Edgar did get into a full kind of like full like pinball kind of everywhere offense, like bouncing off the ropes, high fronts off his dives. Um, yeah. well, in, in several insane dives. I know he hit an amazing frog splash during the match, but yeah. his uh, dive over the referee, twisting, turning yeah. his back. Uh, not a Fosbury flop, just a stage dive, like you're leaping off a balcony. That was very brave. Catches his leg on the rope, I seem to remember, but still managed to make sure his momentum hit Mitch. And yep. uh, yeah, that was a very brave and spectacular dive. Although, uh, let's say Nate Riley in the first match also with a standing on the second flip dive that was uh, pretty breathtaking as well. So both these guys from the Kamikaze Dojo we've mentioned are sort of the two faces of the dojo right now mm. and both of them putting some spectacular uh, gymnastic displays on during their matches as well yeah very high offense um memj got um edgar into like a very 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 deep boston crab like the kind of boston crab where the leg is coming off um but eventually out of nowhere um edgar won with a quick roll-up but um i'm gonna throw this out there straight away the referee's count was insanely quick like well insanely Often, I think 
I, I've got to give props to referee Josh because in my match he did the best to pull Nate Riley off me when Nate Riley was laying in those fists in the corner and there was a rope break. So I think he's on my good books. Uh, often, though, a referee, especially a young and inexperienced one, uh, Josh, who refereed this match, that would only have been maybe his fourth, I think, in total. Um, they're as caught up in the heat of the yep. moment as the wrestlers are. Adrenaline, and, yeah. Yeah, and that roll-up was really out of nowhere. A complete shock, a complete surprise. Oh, my God, he's got a bit of pin. And maybe you count a little bit faster than you would before. Uh, I also noticed a tiny little bit of quirkiness that I thought was uh, just a fun moment uh, in my match. Opening bell, we lock up, I put on a wrist lock. I'm always looking to win a match early. I want to make sure the ref checks that Nate Riley doesn't give up to our opening wrist lock. You never know. Why not find out? Maybe he'll tap straight away and it's an easy night. Um, the referee asked and Nate Riley said no. Uh, second <laughs> match opens, MJ Grayson puts Ed Graddams in a wrist lock. The referee asks, do you want to give up Ed Graddams? And before Ed Graddams even replies, MJ Grayson says, no, it's only a wrist lock. He's not going <laughs> to give up. So me and MJ Grayson, maybe different mindsets or maybe different levels of respect for these uh, kamikaze dojo uh, trainees, but uh, an interesting quirk at the opening two matches there. Yeah. Um, so Edgar won with the roll-up around this two and three quarters. Um, yeah, it was a good match. match. Um, MJ is a, on a bit of a stinky um, loss streak at the moment. Um, hopefully he can get out of that, but he has had tougher competition. Chantel, triple threads, yeah. like you know. So it's not like um, he's been having weaker opponents. No, no, not at all. And I don't think that that's uh, in any way something that is noticeable. Um, I don't think it's something that's even playing on his mind no. because of the quality of competition. We have mentioned people who've been on losing streaks here before, but this isn't one of them uh, because MJ's losses, although they have had a few, they've come in really pivotal big matches, uh, which is fair. Like That's what he's going for. He's had title matches. He's had main events. He's had... Chantel yeah. Jordan. Um, so I don't think he views any of these uh, as really any sort of a, a hindrance or a, or a step behind in his progress. I think they're fairly justifiable losses. And I think um, this is probably only the first one that he maybe thought, ah, that should have been me, but it really yeah. was out of nowhere. It really was a surprise when he was in control. The others, I think, uh, just fairly standard, um, especially in wrestling where you get matches with multiple people and only one winner. Uh, when you talk about MMA, it's a 50-50 split between wins and losses. Uh, that's not true of wrestling. Every wrestler probably has a, a much harder time racking up yeah. wins, especially if you're in a triple threat and then a battle royal uh, and all the rest of it. And I do think when you look at their records, uh, maybe we should uh, look at their singles records more than anything else because when you look at a battle royal, there's one winner and yeah, I never class a battle royale. Yeah, yeah, it's not your fault if you look at you know just twenty people in it. Um, yeah. MJ shouldn't feel hard on himself. He had another great match. I think he's actually on a roll. I don't think it's a, a downside for him. I think he's looking his best. Uh, but this is maybe the first one where he could have won, should have won, and uh, Edgar. Great victory, a great comeback, and uh, come back, really yeah. excited to see what he does next because he was really on a tear before he got injured, and hopefully he'll be right back at it. Definitely. Um, so we're kicking off to one I was interested in. Um, so last show, um, Brandon and Kieran had a matchup. Kieran won that match. Then were, they were both attacked by Will Stevens, and they got on top of Will Stevens, and this led to some weird, weird thing coming out of the, uh, the ring, which we've now found out was called Hastor. Um, and this led to a two-on-two tag team match um, on this show. Yeah, um, and I don't think we should... I don't think we should show it again because we did show it last yeah. time and you really need to get the footage. But Hastor has got to be one of the most unique looking wrestlers in the world, not just in England, not just in Kamikaze, in the world. Yeah, he's, he's a very odd ball. <laughs> he's like he's very unique, very odd ball. Um, so this was a pretty much uh, Brandon and Kieran haven't tagged anywhere else that I've been aware of. So this is kind of new to them. Don't know if Astor and Stevens have been working on this for years. Um, so what I found odd from this is, I don't know if it was because of the element of they don't know what Hastor is. Um, Brandon and Kieran were working on um, Will Stevens a lot in this match, wearing him down, which you wouldn't expect from a big guy um, being the focus of the attack on the bigger guy. I don't know if that was just because Hastor is the odd, I don't want to get involved with that, <laughs> um, yeah. so we'll work on Will Stevens. Um, 
at one point, um, they got Keir... Uh, I need to throw this in here because I found it hilarious. Uh, Kieran got e into his moment where he does the PK kick. He hit um, Steve, Will Stevens so hard with the follow-through, he nearly booted the ref afterwards. His foot nearly kicked the ref. It was so hard. Um, this... I will say, I think in wrestling, you always lay it in even harder on your friends. We know Kieran yeah. and Will have been training together more than almost anyone else at Kamikaze and work mm. together and team together. So whenever they come across each other, it does seem to be like they really lay it in because they're so equal that they want to prove themselves and be the best one of the pair. And uh, it's really made an interesting dynamic here at Kamikaze where Will has taken a darker and more twisted side to him that I don't think we've ever seen before. Yeah, it was definitely not expected. Um, but yeah, so following that, yes, the um, so Adam had to get out of the way of this kick that nearly um, KO'd himself. Um, this began like a bit of um, a bit of mayhem outside, just battering each other, mauling each other, both teams. Um, but eventually, the team of Will Stevens and Hastor picked up the win with a like cl uh, choke slam. Then it was followed by a pole driver, which was nice to see. Um, yeah, really well executed. Very good power driver. driver. Um, this match overall, um, there was a, a lot going on. Um, I feel like um, the team of Brandon and Kieran kind of. There was times where they were working together and times where they weren't. There was times where yeah. Brandon, as a singles wrestler, I don't think he could jump it. Like there'd be times where he could have jumped to help his partner. He just watched it. Um, yeah. But overall, um, I rate it a two star matchup. Um, and Will Stevens and. Has still picked up the win, um, so that's the future. Looks good for them. Yeah, um, I I really enjoyed the middle part of this match when Hastor was really shown off and really mm. got to uh, unleash for the first time. Uh, but personally, for a multitude of reasons, hated the opening and hated the ending. So the ending, as you said, completely broke down. Mm. Hastor grabs the illegal man on the outside, Kieran. He's got the mandible claw. Ref doesn't know which way to turn. It's absolute chaos. Uh, and I really think that the intimidation of Hastor to the referee uh, made this match lose a bit of its edge at the end. And I think the referee completely lost track. And I would have preferred a more strict enforcement of yeah. the rules so we could have seen a more exciting match at the end there because I just really didn't know who was where for the last couple of minutes. And for the opening few minutes, whether or not it's because Will is looking not only to keep Hastor's weapons a little bit secret, but also he seems like he really has to control Hastor. He really has yeah. to focus on Hastor. But because of that, I agree. I'm glad you brought it up first that he uh, he got absolutely battered for uh, the first few minutes yeah. by the other team. And uh, I was very disappointed in that performance. I really expected... Uh, with this new look and this new uh, idea that these two have got, Will and Hastor, that Will would have come out more dangerous than ever. And in fact, it was almost a one-sided, uh, not even particularly compelling, just a, an absolute whitewash for, yeah. Two, yeah, for two or three minutes. So um, really disappointed there in that opening and the chaos at the end. Uh, but the middle section was uh, very interesting. The more we got to see Hastor and Will in control and has to unleash. Uh, yeah, that was very fascinating. And, and they did a really good job together as a unit. But Will needs to make sure he's got his eyes on his opponent as soon as the match starts, because he was uh, getting getting owned at the beginning of this one. And for me, the referees need to keep control at the end there so we know exactly what's going on and who is legal and who is going to score an upset win at any moment. Yeah, it might be next match up. Um, he knows he still needs to keep a slight eye on Astor, but at least he knows that they can work. Um, so yeah. it might be a more, more offense. Yeah, it did feel like Will was almost mm. trying to do too much in the opening himself because he didn't... Either he was holding Hastor back for a secret weapon or he didn't trust Hastor because he was so wild and rabid yeah. and, and hard to control. Could be a DQ instantly. Could yeah. be a DQ, yeah. exactly. But uh, I think Will took a little bit too much on himself there and uh, it almost backfired. And It could have been three minutes and done, uh, judging by the opening three minutes. But uh, at least they got it back on track and came away with a big win. Excellent. Um, so we'll go straight to the first half main event, um, which was Hassan Ali um, versus Man Like the Race. Um, so Hassan Ali's been on a bit of a roll. Man Like the Race has been on a, just a roll. Not a bit of a roll, he's just he's everywhere. Um, he was wrestling in uh, Mania Weekend um, in America recently, so the man's doing well for himself. Um, so this kicked off with first two minutes or so, which more was just because um, they're both good guys. Uh, they were trying to one-up themselves with a the crowd of who's going to cheer for me more than the other guy. 
Um, it, it felt like a bit like a um, weird um, Hulk Hogan rock kind of let's get the uh, crowd going kind of thing. Um, this fight was followed up by a bit of one upsmanship from both competitors, like um, who can do this better, who can do this better. Um, Hassan was a ball of fire in this matchup, though. Um, but then I think Doris worked out that he just needed to subdue Hassan, and it became a bit of a grind. Um, yeah. Working, slowing Hassan down, grinding down every time Hassan's trying to get a bit of fire, grinding him down completely. Um Hassan hit a screwdriver and Doris kicked out, which was really out of nowhere, um, which I really, I really was happy to see that. Then there was a bit of back and forth from both guys, but out of nowhere, Doris hit a kind of just a powerbomb, sit-down powerbomb, picked up the win. Um, I read this two and a half stars. Um, it was decent, um, but I feel like there was a lot more that could have come. Yeah, I think not just are they both good guys, but they are also quite good friends yeah. and they often travel together and they often ride together to shows. It felt like at the start with this, who's going to get the more cheers? Um, almost like they didn't want to uh, to lay into each other. Yeah. They didn't want to because they are good friends. Uh, and then once it seemed like Hassan, who had sort of been the underdog because of this role of Doris's Hassan really did come into this as the underdog. When uh, the crowd really started to get behind him and he started mm. to show that power, um, Doris did realise that he could just out-wrestle him. He had a little bit of that experience advantage and he really did slow the pace down. And yeah, it didn't ever felt like it kicked into the next gear after that. It felt like it stayed with uh, Doris one step ahead and uh, knowing that he had that experience and slight technical advantage over Hassan. And it's smart from Doris because you don't want Hassan to get the crowd back into it because if Hassan starts to get firing up, he's a real powerhouse and he's really energetic and he feeds off them. So um, I think maybe for both men, but Hassan more than Doris, Reese, having the crowd split between the two was a weakness. Uh, Hassan's mm -hmm. used to being the absolute favourite, and he normally lives off that energy. And he had the, some of the crowd, but obviously some of the crowd were cheering for Doris. His power was maybe halved. Yeah. Um, so this um, another role for Doris. Um, he picks up the win. Um, Hassan is on a bit of a he's on a roll, but he does get stop start. Um, so hopefully, well, we, we won't spoil this actually. Uh, I was about to go, hopefully, his next match, but we'll get there. Um, so that was the first half of the show. Um, we kicked off the second half with a match I was looking forward um, to seeing, which was Lucia Lee um, versus Kay Jutler. Um, this kicked off very oddly, though. I didn't expect it. Um, so Kay said they were basically decided that they didn't need to fight. It was going like, I, I'm bigger than you, like, I'm stronger and tougher. We don't need to fight, uh, which was very surprised by um, that Cage didn't want to actually um, to do this. I thought he was, uh, was going to be into it, but uh, Lucy Lee weren't having any of that um, and stopped that straight away. And then it was kind of like a like a bit of um, Cage Hitler tried to show it out who's the boss with the kind of power, the full on power for himself. Chucked her fully out the ring, which she took a horrible landing. Like, it was like a proper fuddy landing horrible. Um, she For a lot of this then, I think Kay was just kind of, I let you, I could have let you not do this, but you've decided to do this, so I'm going to show you why you shouldn't have done it. It was proper ragdolling around the ring. Um, Lucy Lee then just kicked into second gear, full of fire-up strikes everywhere. Um, beautiful sign wider slam for Kay Jutlat. Um Then she got him into a guillotine, jumped to the top rope, full-on guillotine choke. Um, if you're going to stop a big guy, choke his wind out, get the wind out of yourself. Um, the free arm ref drops that they do to check if the opponent is still with it. Um, Kay eventually got up for the last drop before he was going to call the match. Um, and then Kay won with a Falcon Arrow, a beautiful Falcon Arrow. Um, I read this three and a quarter stars. Really, really enjoyed this match. Yes, I loved this match. Um, Lucia really thinking on her feet in a lot of those situations, like you said, with this choke. Mm -hmm. It was very clear to me that she's going for a Tornado DDT. K overpowers her. He doesn't go down, but she's thinking on her feet. She grabs the choke instead. Fantastic work. Um, K, I think, if I recall correctly, only hit Lucia once with a clothesline yeah. in this match, and it was absolutely one of the hardest clotheslines, one of the most biggest strikes you'll ever see in a wrestling match. Uh, but yeah, because he didn't want to. He held yeah. himself back. Um, loved the narrative that grew out of this from Kay. He uh, 
did use his power in the early goings, but he wasn't being overly aggressive. He was just trying to win technically, yeah. soundly, just like get those shoulders to the mat and get out of here. But Lucia's heart and fire. Uh, she took him to Luplex City. She uh, absolutely uh, destroyed him at parts of the match. It was definitely not one-sided. I thought this was fantastic to watch. Um, also, Lucia thinking on her feet ended up with Kay for a large part of this match, almost working over his own hands because every time he'd go for something, she'd move, Jobs, she'd duck, yeah. she'd dodge, she'd weave, and he kept hitting his hands on the mat, on the ring post, and uh, yeah, by the end of the match, I'm sure he was feeling quite bad in the hands, which uh, is a unique place for a wrestling match to go. Um, yeah, one of my favourite matches at Kamikaze Pro. Uh, such an interesting dynamic. Fantastic work from both competitors. A well-earned win from Kay, but Lucia making him earn it, uh, and I really enjoyed watching it. Yeah, look, Lucia's match the last few months have been excellent. Um, she's always the one to watch. Um, and then Kay Jutla, um, like a stone wall of Kamikaze, Kay Jutla's yeah. Kay Jutla. Um, so we'll move on to uh, Luke Douglas versus JC. Um, so Luke's coming off a loss against Maximus Sikoru previously, um, which he should have won, got a bit complacent, got rolled up. So this match is kind of a kind of redemption. He needs to uh, work on that. And JC fought yourself um, and you picked up the win on that. JC tried to use a lot of the techniques that you used against yourself. Um, so trying to be trying to outsmart rather than work hard. Um, what I liked about this straight away is JC went straight for a roll up within the first second of the match. Try and roll him yeah. up at two count, and it was like, oh my god. Um, then he was trying to outsmart Luke for a lot of it, um, but at this point, I think Luke just had enough. Um, a bit of brawling by the team. Um, Cop to the ring post as well, which looked a pretty grim at that point. Um, JC was trying a lot of um, leaping offense, but it was like he couldn't get the leap he normally can do. Because I've seen him from yourself, he got a few relief and offset drop kicks were beautiful. But this, it was just like he was leaping, but just wasn't getting the heights. Uh, there was like a curb stunt that he just then nearly hit. Um, he tried to do like a jumping leg drop here in the chest. It just, it, for some reason, I don't know if he was just a bit off in this match. Um, Luke then showed him how a proper drop kick done, took his head off <laughs> with a drop kick. Um, don't know if he was just getting annoyed by the whole situation. Um, and then the move that we keep mentioning every show, that um, spin-out pedigree, tiger flip, <laughs> um, so good. Um, and then Luke just decided he's had enough, about 55 super kicks. Um, JC at one point was saying, come on, hit me more. I think he was kind of show how tough he was. By the way, at the fifth, he was just not there to be hit. Um, he was just... It was just pounding into mush at that point. Um, and then Luke picked up the win with his spin-out driver. Um, I'd write this two and three-quarter stars. Um, it was it was a decent matchup. Um, JC was slightly off, I feel like. Um, and Luke was just back to his winning waves. Yeah, um, I think JC maybe picked up a bit of an injury as well mm. last time. So maybe that affected his leap. Um, yeah, for me, this match... Um, is the opposite of the tag match. I was very intrigued at the start with JC's antics. I think, like you said, it was a smart thing to do yeah. because Luke was already in his own head about the loss to Maximus Okoro. So playing those mind games and going for those roll-ups, really smart. Uh, at the end, uh, Luke completely lost it and was really on fire in the closing stretch. But the middle, to me, completely fell apart. And I think that's down to Luke knowing that a brawl is going to favour him. Yeah. And JC trying to bring in some of the flashiness when he really needed to just bring in a brawl. Um, like you said, the curb stomp, that was a very messy one in the early goings where it looked like he half got it and uh, Luke half counted it. Yeah. Um, on the outside, brawling very messy. JC's come back again. He's trying to do a bit flashier than maybe he needed to. And he should just uh, get a few more perfect moves rather than trying moves that aren't quite in the repertoire a hundred percent yet um so great start great ending middle got very messy to me and as soon as that happened i knew luke was going to end up coming out on top of that uh, because as soon as it got messy and brawly and fighty you know that's luke's wheelhouse and it never really came back to being a uh, flashy offense that jc excels at um and it stayed in that brawly scrappy department and we all know that that's luke's going to be very happy in that area and he's going to obviously show jc who's only in a second match yeah so uh, we can't blame him for it he started very 
very well. He definitely managed to uh, put up a good fight, but he was never going to come out on top of a messy, scrappy match. And I would have liked to have seen him crisp up that offense, crisp up those sequences, and maybe he'd have stood uh, more of a fighting chance. Yeah, um, and it's pretty much uh, Jesse's had like a baptism, the fire for yourself and then fighting Luke. Luke he, um, was smart enough this time around that um, not to get complacent. He just yeah. made sure the win was definitely happening um, to get back on track. Yeah, although although maybe too much. And this is a narrative that I'm really interested in because, like you said, he super kicked J- I I lost count. I yeah, yeah lost just count. like... It just happened. JC, so the first two was going to yeah. hit me, and then by the seventh, yeah. JC wasn't in there. Wasn't in yeah. the, the lights were no one's home. <laughs> so, so there's, <laughs> there's a point in this. Uh, there's a point in the match where you go up and you taunt a bit too early and you get rolled up. Uh, but there's also a point where you're super kicking somebody who you maybe could have pinned. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just anger. Ago. Just pure yeah. anger. So, uh, I thought it was really good to see that in uh, Luke's face. I thought his uh, his journey in kamikaze at the moment has reached a very interesting point and uh it's really interesting to see where he goes and what his character is doing and who he is and where he sits with this crowd because he gets a really mixed reaction of cheers and boos um he's a fascinating character uh yeah this time he did make sure of it maybe a little too much maybe a little yeah. too much um so yeah that's interesting to see what will happen to him next for sure definitely um, we'll go on to the Kamikaze Pro. Wait, what was going to be the Kamikaze Pro live title? Um, it was George Lydon versus Chantel Jordan. And before we kick off into this review, it's not going to do just this to how good this match was. Um, watch it on demand. It's um, well, it's out today, recording wise, but it's definitely going to be out by Tuesday when it's actually out. Um, so both competitors win the ring, and then um, Chantel grabbed the mic, which you don't see much of, um, and she. Straight up admitted that George um, beat her for the Kamikaze Pro title. And Kamikaze is not like the kind of places where rematches and so forth. You have to work for the matches. And then Chantel upped the stakes. So instead of it being for the Kamikaze Pro live title, it was actually for the Relentless title. Um, which is like a big thing for George to be talent challenging for a main um, roster title. Um, this was great. Uh, like um it started with your typical like your one upmanship, um both like top of their game. Um it's hard to explain, there was so much going on. Um one thing that comes to mind straight away is the moonsault kick. Um mid air, moonsault kicked mid air, like I thought that was done already. Um to kick out that is incredible. Um Jordan then was a bit on top with that with the striking offence. Um yeah, this was followed by a Meteora um, from Chantal, which looked brutal. Um, Tiger Driver kick out. Strike from both of them, just wailing on each other. P- a Pele kick from George, just out of nowhere. Um, Neither the Germans from Chantal's. A four f- um, Chantal with 450 kick out, which was just insane in itself. Um, Canadian Destroyers in... Head and then just like follow on pole driver and chance out eventually to pick up the win after this absolute chaos of a match. Um, in a good way, not chaos as in like just chaos in oh my god, what's happening? Um, I read this for in three quarters, it was it was good, very good matchup. Yeah, um, we know your rating system is absolutely ludicrous. This was one of the best <laughs> matches I've, I've ever seen, so the fact you haven't given it four just offensive, and obviously, you've added a star to loops match as you always do so take that star put it on this one because this was amazing <laughs> uh, yeah absolutely one of my favorite matches um everything you've just said the tiger drivers from george mm. don't think i've ever seen them before no. uh somebody kicking out of george's 450 don't think i've ever seen that before chantel strikes mid dives like the moonsault don't think i've seen yeah. that before um george did attack him a chinoku style dive to the outside love to see that in this day and age um yeah this was fantastic um this week for those of you who don't know or who watch this at some point in the future catching up with some old kamikaze shows this is the week of the world chess championship and uh i think maybe you'll see there that when you're this close to a win or you think you've got the upper hand, uh, it's a mind game and you end up giving stuff away. For me, the best move of this match was the very first one that happened, Chantel changing which belt. Yeah. Because that put the pressure on George. Even though the pressure you'd think would already be on him as the defending champion, he's been a successful, a dominant, a very comfortable at times defending champion. And I thought going into this, he'd already beat Chantel for this belt. But now you up the stakes. 
and you say to George, if you win this match, you're coming out with two belts, one that you never thought you'd have a chance to have. And I think that is what got into his mm. head and that that is the real reason why Chantel came away because they were so evenly matched um, and it was a fantastic match from start to finish. Uh, but I think as soon as she put the relentless belt on the line and it wasn't both belts, she said, you keep yours, let's have my belt on the line. For a second, George must have just got that little bit extra yeah. excitement, that little bit extra adrenaline, but it's caused him to maybe miss game a few gone, key yeah. parts. Yeah. And just change the game plan and up the game plan and just uh, try and extend yourself a little too much, like you might see in any tactical game. You're pushing for the win, you extend too far, and uh, the other person swoops in and stays strong on the defense. The strike exchanges from these two were fantastic. Um, the heart and soul, because they're such good friends. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic from start to finish. They know each other very well. Incredible match. Almost impossible to explain. You mm-hmm. need to go watch it. Sorry. If you haven't seen it, you need to. Uh, shows why Kamikaze is one of the best in the country. And for me, uh, this show had three really outstanding matches. I was very proud of my own match. But Kay Jutler versus Lucia Lee and this match are must-see matches, in my opinion. Um, but this one, yeah, absolutely mind-blowingly good and what i like about the result of this that means there has to be a rubber match uh Agreed. one Agreed. on one has to get after we need to know a winner yeah and you, and what's going to happen in that match is it going to be both belts on the line is it going to be no belt and it's just proving ground i think we're really eager to find out yeah. what's going to happen they've had two fantastic matches and uh we need to see the third one uh and whether or not that's for both belts uh whether it's uh in a bigger venue or yeah. something else, uh, who knows? But it's it's set up, it's teetering, it's teasing us right now. Uh, we need to see it. Yeah. Um. So we'll lead to the main event. So you uh, would have thought then the, sh- then the show ended. <laughs> and we were all so you would have thought Chantel versus George Lydon was the main event. Um, yeah. You would have I thought would. that was my match of the night. Well, you'd be wrong. Mystery battle royale time, people. My five star, first five star for coming up. <laughs> Good God. Um, so, for people... I, I don't think I can do justice for this mystery battle royale either. So, for people that don't know, Kamikaze do like to do very mysterious things. They had the roulette rumble, which is a great concept. Uh, it's a raw rumble, except the wrestlers don't know when they're coming out, because the fans pick the names out of hat. So, you could be coming out straight away, you could be coming out at the end, you don't know. Um... Mystery Battle Royale, it was announced that you knew it was a Battle Royale. There was no stipulation, <laughs> you didn't know the stipulation until you were in the ring. Um, so it instantly went downhill for a lot of the wrestlers. I could see their face in the ring when uh, Laurie announced there's going to be a few games. Like, then Samuel Hughes rightly went, games? <laughs> like, um, so I'm going to break this down. Uh, so the first game in the mystery battle royale, I can't believe them, was Floor is Lava. <laughs> floor is Lava. Yep. Um, is the ring the floor? Is the mat the floor? Um, this was, I think, won by Brandon. I think they decided it was won by Brandon because I was running yeah. if it was the... Because they didn't, I was confused if it was the last person to get on the rope or something was out, but it was the opposite. Brandon got on the rope first, so Floor is Lava yeah. and he won. Um, so Brandon, La- Brandon Lava, that's it. <laughs> Brandon Jordan had won, um, and he was exempt from the rest of the games because he's already won. Yeah, to he, get... he advanced to the yeah. next round. Don't, don't know what on earth he found confusing about this <laughs> yeah. match. It made total sense, um, but it was really great. And what I also forgot to mention was, um, so George wasn't in it, Chantal wasn't in it due to their match previously, Doris wasn't in it, but Spider-Man was in it. Uh... <laughs> I've heard. Again, another behind the scenes. Let's not tell everyone, but behind the scenes, I heard that was Miles Morales Spider Man. Yes. Um, film's coming out soon as well. Kamikaze and them sponsorships. Jim at Kamikaze. <laughs> The next uh, matchup was oh, the matchup. I'm confused myself here. The next round was a medicine ball round, where basically what would happen is all 25 billion people that were in the ring, uh, there was a medicine ball put in the middle, and it was the la- um, I don't know how long the time. I think it must have been a minute. Um, it it was a free for all. Last person to have the medicine ball in their hands wins. Um, yeah. So free, 
brief note of actual interest here, um, not to say that this medicine ball round <laughs> wasn't thrilling, as I'm sure it was, but um, you mentioned Samuel Hughes. Uh, Samuel Hughes was not on the show. Like you just mentioned, twenty five thousand yeah. people. There was more people in this yeah, match than lot. we've mentioned, including a few debuts, a few Kamikaze Dojo trainees, but also I think Rory um, from um, Aspire. I think was in this match. There was a few people coming in and crossing over. Um, other people who we may have never seen before. So it did make for, I'm sure, fascinating trivia in the future, where we'll say when did that person first yeah. appear, uh, and it will be this match. Uh, when you go back and you watch some old 2002 TNA pay-per-view and you can't really believe who's in it, that will be this match for Kamikaze. Uh, there was way more than just the people we've listed. Yep, so Sammy Hughes said uh, Maximus Sokoro, um, boot in hand. Um... <laughs> in the cast, Maximus Sokoro was in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Rory, was that the gentleman in the blue trunks? If I remember. Yes. Yeah, he looked legit. I'm going to be honest, straight when I saw him, he looked legit. I've not actually seen him wrestle, um, but he looks like he can uh, kick someone's face. Yeah, Rory, Rory Price, uh, yeah, yeah tra- trained with him uh, in the dojo because he has made some appearances down there and over in uh, the Full Force Barracks over in Leamington. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, really good uh, talent and obviously looking to break out away from his home uh, ground. And, yeah. Probably we may see may see him have a singles or tag match in the future, but this was his uh, Kamikaze what a day. debut for him. <laughs> and, and obviously, it was the debut of Miles Morales as Spider Man. And talking to Miles Morales, so uh, Miles Morales, um, due to uh, web slinging, um, obviously he was going to win the medicine ball <laughs> round. How was he going to lose that? Um, so he was through to the next round. This was followed by a fantastic round, which was called "Find the Wrestling Figure." Um, so there was a wrestling figure hidden in the venue. You had to find it. Um, Kay Juttler was picking up children. That's all I remember of this. Um, and eventually Kay Juttler did pick up, um, find the wrestling figure. It was a, a same puck wrestling figure, if you want to know. Um, so Kay Juttler's through to yeah. the next round. And obviously that's CM Punk's debut at Kamikaze. Yes. Sponsorships. Morales, Morales, CM Punk. Um... I'm really confused by what I've wrote here. Oh, it was the one-legged. Um, so what it was, um, it was your typical balance test. One leg, um, stay on your leg, the longest. Last person yeah. out wins. Um, there was no rules, so people immediately just started shoving each other over. What I really liked with this, everyone was quite gentlemanly for the first like 10 seconds, and then Laurie went, yeah, there's no rules, and everyone just went mental. Um, Maximus Cora cheated because he has a, he's on one leg anyway. That's what I'm throwing out there yeah. right now. Um, at this point, a few wrestlers decided they didn't want to be a part of this. Uh, Luke Douglas was just sitting in the corner. Um, you just were there to be, I feel like. Um, if you get to see any of the Kamikaze, uh, official released photographs from this, you'll see I look very unhappy (laughs) with the situation. I can see why. Um, but talking of our situations, the next round... Despite my complaints, the crowd seemed to be having a wonderful time, which I'm sure is the point of Kamikaze yeah. uh, booking something like this to entertain the fans. It did not entertain me, the wrestler. Uh, I hated it. And it was <laughs> awful. Talking of um, entertaining, we're up to the chat-up line round. Um, so a certain person won the chat-up line round. Would you like me to? Would you like to tell them who it was and what the chat-up line was? I seem to remember this show ended with Chantal and George. I, I think that was the main, and we stopped. I don't remember anything after that. So, um, in his delirium, then, um, a Mr. Alex Connors won the chat up line round um, with a line which I don't remember the full of it, but the line wasn't even a chat up. It was just you basically ripping into um, Laurie and um, that, getting the win. So, the, the round was that you had to chat up Laurie's partner. I believe that yeah, was Laurie's partner. She was the judge, yes. Yeah, uh, Laurie's um, girlfriend was the judge for this round. And then, if I remember, you said you'd just do anything to hurt him, basically, if you want. So yeah, like... I, I really wanted to be in the room while he cried, and I thought maybe uh, me and his girlfriend could make that happen some way or another. Um, and yeah, apparently she agreed, because that was the winning line. Yep, yeah, and you threw to the next round, which you all, that's what you really wanted. Um... <laughs> Next up, there's so many games, by the way. Musical chairs. Um, 
we all know what musical jazz is. Um, this was one by Hassan Ali. Um, yeah, and, though this one was fascinating because half the uh, roster were playing standard and the other half started basically brawling at times. Yep. There was a few moves thrown into this musical chairs. Also, I'm going to throw out to JC, he got lamped so many times in this this, this game. Yeah. He got hit by a wrench at one point by Luke Douglas, got KO'd by Samuel Hughes. Everyone else was kind of hitting each other, but not full on. JC was just getting battered. Um, so musical chairs, Hassan Ali is now through. Um, the next one up, which I, I will throw out there, the maths one. My co-host, I blew their mind because I got the mass question within like five seconds of it being done. Um, I also got this very quickly. Very, very simple mass question. Um, took a few yeah, people in the ring a while to uh, kind of figure it out. Um, and surprisingly, um, Nate Riley was the one that picked the uh, the mass question up. That sounded bad yeah. like I was going, surprisingly, Nate Riley is the mathematician here. Yeah, I think it really uh, said more for the schooling system of Birmingham's inner city schools than it said for any of the Kamikaze roster because that should have been way faster. Yeah, it was something like uh, 1 plus 2 times by 6 times by 4. It was something really... It it was a factorial. It was 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. Yeah, something really And then they just added numbers on like that. It was easy. It was easy. Go check it out. See how quickly you did it. Stopwatch. Um, Go check it out. (laughs) Five star match. Uh, dance off was next. <laughs> yeah. Five which star match up, followed by dance off. <laughs> which brings up another uh, person that we had, Carl Robinson, now a normal ring announcer, making an appearance in this battle royal. He was dancing away in this dance off. What blew me up, blew my mind though, was when he first was about to break it out. I thought something exceptional was going to happen. I thought Carl Robinson had like a perfect break dancing routine, I, I, and then it just turned into a spin and I was like oh oh I wow. thought it was exceptional I thought he did fantastic <laughs> I just I just he went full into it like I thought oh my god it's Cole learnt the break yeah. dance um, <laughs> he's got the optimism and he's got yeah. the hype um, I'll be honest MJ Grayson was um, robbed of this uh, I liked MJ Grayson's um, dancing in this um, everyone else was kind of a bit naff Lucy Lee um, won with um, some wild Dancing, followed by some splits. Um, and she's through to the next round. Next up, the next round. Um, so it was a four on four. Um, think about it, guys. It's in a ring. Four on four, tug of war. In a ring. Um, so it was the team of Connors, Akuru, Roy Lee, and Asan. Versus, I believe it would be then Brandon, Spotted Man, Jutla, and Lucia Lee. Yes. Um, so, I'll be honest, the one team looked very resided. You had Spider Man, who was jacked. You had Kay Jutla, who is jacked. Um... And I did my absolute best to actively lose this round, but Hassan is jacked. He's, a, he's <laughs> just so, he's stronger than he looks. It's not even being jacked. He. Is just so strong internally. He could have, you know, done the whole job by himself and pretty much did. Um, I do believe that both teams tried to cheat by tying their ropes yeah, to the, on the edge. Yeah. Um, just downright dirty behaviour that you would never see from me. Uh, but at the end, Hassan pretty much by himself uh, managed to uh, yank the other four members of the other team over the rope in the centre. Exactly. Um, so just picture this. Well, you you can you need to watch it, but um, there's not you much. Way, there's nowhere you can really go with a tug of war in a ring. You can't really put, pull this far because eventually no. you can have all four people just wedged in a corner. Um, I did not understand the rules. There was something <laughs> about getting the rope to a certain point, and it felt like Hassan did that three or four yeah, times. Yeah, there was. It was, was the winner. It seemed like oh, tug of war would be great, but in a ring, it's not great. Right. They should have done it outside Obviously, the ring, maybe. Um, yeah, I think it was pretty clear Marvel had paid off the referees to uh, get Spider-Man through, but Hassan just powered everyone over yeah. to the side until it was undeniable. So this was followed by some wrestling, um, a submission match. I was confused where I didn't know it was um, a single elimination. I thought it was just this is the match now, fight or four weights done. Um, so it was Connors, Riley, Hassan and the one-legged man, um, Maximus Okoro in a submission match. So, yeah. Riley and Hassan did the smart thing, and they attacked each other. Oh, wait, Connors did the smart thing and attacked the one-legged man. <laughs> um, yeah. Wailed on his leg, the injured leg, 
and Okoro taps out, you know. Immediately, the yeah. guy's got a broken <laughs> leg. Like, Why? Yeah. Well, I don't understand. Does Kamikaze even sanction his addition to this battle royal? I'll never know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, not really a submission. I stood on his leg. His leg was in a cast. I stood on it with all my weight until he tapped out, which didn't take long. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, well done to get to the final four in a battle royal with only while you're let it's literally in a cast yeah it was literally suited and booted a big <laughs> medical boot with a cast underneath it well done for getting to the final four Max mr caro but you were never going to win a submissions match uh with that injury yeah especially well you could have if you weren't in the match because the other two decided not to attack the man with the bad leg yeah uh, they thought maybe they had to use their honor and their nobility to not go after him i just wanted to get this match over as quickly as possible, <laughs> so I went straight to the submission immediately. Um, this followed by um, a triple threat, just a your normal triple threat, which was um, yourself, Ali, and Rolly. Um, I was surprised Rolly and Ali didn't try and gang up on you. I'm gonna be honest, um, it was a very straightforward well, triple threat match. I could feel it coming, yeah. so I bailed out the ring whenever <laughs> it happened. Um, we tried to go for a standard triple threat, every person for themselves, but every time when I felt those two ganging up on me because they knew I was the stronger one, I bailed out the ring, let those two go at it until I saw an opportunity to roll Nate Riley up, which again, the referee said was a rope break. It's a triple threat match with no disqualifications, referee. And worse than that, it's a mystery battle royal that we all try to get to the end of, referee. That's not a rope break and a triple threat. Hell the fall. Yeah, um, my um, co-host notes that, and they were like, yeah, yeah, why is that? Yeah. yeah. Um, it shouldn't have been. So I had to carry on and seek another opportunity and get him later, but thankfully I did manage to eventually pin Nate Riley to the to the mat, which meant that I'd won two out of these matches. Is yeah. that not enough? Is that not how this works? No. And then, to top it all off, um, to the continue the misery for Alec Connors, <laughs> um, he had to fight Hassan Ali in a lumberjack match. Um, was basically Kamikaze's way of saying, as we've mentioned, this battle royal had 25,000 people in it. So <laughs> the reason they could have all gone when they were eliminated, couldn't they have gone to yeah. the back? No, we had a lumberjack match just to make this 24,999 against one. It was absolutely biased against me. Hassan had all his backup. Every time I tried to bail out of the ring like I had done in the triple threat, there was Hassan's buddies throwing me back in. Uh, and in the end, I think Hassan caught me off guard with a spear. He does have one of the best spears in the game. Uh, and that was the end, yeah. thankfully, of the match. Um, so I don't know if it was announced prior to this, your Lumberjack match or after Lumberjack match, but the winner of that match now faces George at the next show uh, for the Camacaz yeah, Pro was, Live Talk. It was announced afterwards, uh, or, or or obviously I'd, I'd have won if I'd have known, obviously. Or, but if you would have won, they wouldn't have announced it because they're against you. Uh, we are on to you, Kamikaze management. <laughs> But anyway, um, Alex has told me this is his favourite match he's ever been in and he wants many more of them. Five stars. So the show ended <laughs> after Chantal versus George. That was a fantastic main event from Chantal and George. And you should go and check out this event all the way up until the end of Chantel versus George. Yeah, that was the uh, main event. I've been told that if I release the review of the, uh, the Kamikaze Pro, I'm going to get sued. By uh, Mr. Connors. Um, but yeah, overall, except for... The, I, I didn't enjoy that. Uh, I'm going to be honest, it's not my kind of thing. It was just... Yeah. Uh, I read it three, qu- it was, uh, three quarters. I read it at the start. It was very interactive for a live crowd. Yeah. It was very unusual for the live crowd. They had a lot to do and get involved in. It was a whole new experience for a live crowd to really have what was more of a interactive experience than a show uh, and was more of uh, fun and games and they got to play around with the, the concepts uh, rather than just sit and watch so I'm sure if you're there in person and your injury isn't on the line like a Maximus Sakara <laughs> or, or myself going into it with a bad foot um, and you don't have a career on the line I'm sure sat there in the crowd you had an absolute blast I did not. Or your pride, or your spirit, or your <laughs> that's yeah. not involved. Um, or the rest of your Sunday. It's fun to watch in places where you can see people dying inside in the ring, like Alex Connors, Luke Douglas, uh, Sam Hughes just dying inside to be a part of it. Um, but minus that, overall, um, decent show. Um, 
your match was very good. Um, Chantal Jordan versus George Lawden was extremely good. Um, Kay Jutler, Lucy Lee, very, very good. Um, so some decent matches in between. Mystery Battle Royale, match of the night, five stars. Um, I was so close to agreeing with you for once. Those three <laughs> matches were fantastic. And you had to ruin it. Like you always do, right? You had to ruin it. Five stars. You had to. You had to ruin it. <laughs> First Kamikaze, five star. Um, but yeah, that's the end of the review. Um, so Kamikaze haven't announced their latest show, so I'm not missing it this time. I'm actually not doing a bad job. They haven't announced it. Leave me alone. Yeah, but we do know that that will contain Hassan Ali. As you mentioned, let's not skim over it. He yeah. did win the Mystery Battle Royal, and they did announce Hassan versus George for the belt will be at the next show. Uh, I think we're trialling a few new venues, and that's why there's been a bit of a delay. Mm. Um, I know I've uh, been sent to have a look at some coming up next week, so uh, I'm sure it'll be announced as soon as they know which venue they want to do it in uh, and you'll definitely get Hassan versus George as well as uh, follow-ups to everything we've just talked about so I'm sure it'll be announced soon and uh, I'm very excited about where some people are Edgar and Nate that rivalry for this face of the barracks continues and they're both putting on great match after great match uh, Luke Douglas that loss, he still seems to be in a really angry place and he's yo-yoing up and down. So really excited to see what happens there. Hasta and Will finally gelling. Me being robbed by Kamikaze management forever. So it's really going to be a good one. Uh, I'm sure it'll be announced very shortly. Uh, I like you were, you're trying to add a positive note to this. So let's bring it back to the Mystery Battle Royale. So uh, that might be on the I next show as well. <laughs> this is next season of your reviews. Uh, I've been Alex Connors. This has been great and we'll talk to you next time. Bye. <laughs> Like, description, link. Um, adios, everyone.